In 2022, I released Modeling One, which is an awesome course to get you familiar with the modeling tools inside of Houdini. This particular video is going to be the start of the tower exercise. The way it works is that I go through an exercise giving you some ideas, and then I have you battle with the challenges yourself. And along the way, you learn all kinds of quick tips, you learn about all kinds of nodes. It's a really fun and interactive way to learn about modeling as you're getting started with Houdini. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to check out the full course, visit cgforge.com. All right, my friends, now on to the tower. For this particular tower, what we're going to do is use this reference as inspiration. We're not going to try to copy this one-to-one, -one, although, of course, you're welcome to do whatever you'd like as far as that goes, but I want to take this as inspiration, bounce off, do a little bit of improvising on my own, as we can see here with this hat that's going on, and I'll show you a few extra techniques for getting all this detailed stuff in here. So the first challenge you might be wondering here is how the heck do we get these bricks in here? And depending on your situation, you may want to go one of two routes. One route is that we can take each individual brick and try to instance that along this geometry. And that might be ideal if let's say you're trying to do a destruction sim and you actually need those individual bricks to be a part of that sim. However, aesthetically, this provides a pretty big challenge because we need to have all of this flagstone perfectly aligned in such a way where we don't have any stone overlapping each other, where they're resting naturally on top of each other, and that's just not easy to do. There are some techniques out there for this, but the problem is that we're not going to easily get this kind of variation and detail through how we stack those flagstone bricks. If you do have something a bit more chaotic, I have done a situation before where we create an invisible collider and we use an RBD simulation to pile up rocks. Uh, that could be another route you go, but in general, again, I don't recommend going that route unless you absolutely need to have some kind of destruction sim blowing that up. So in this case, we have an easier solution available to us. What we can do is just start off with the silhouette, which is what we have right here. Just a rough silhouette of something that you want to make with the bricks. We do that, we basically subdivide, so we have lots of these tiny polygons going on, and we can rely on a triplanar displace node. This will take a texture map and use that to displace against these polygons. So by default, we see this UV grid going on right now, but if we go online, we can find ourselves at, let's say, texturehaven.com, find ourselves some textures, maybe go to, let's say, the stone or the rock, and then if we scroll down, we have this here, a broken wall, or there's even a castle wall slates. So, we click on something like this, we can find it for free, we download the displacement map, and as soon as we load in the displacement map, we will find that it's not too difficult at all to get these stones started in the right direction. So right now this is going the opposite direction. What we can do is go negative in that displacement amounts, and now we can start seeing this detail show through. Let's go back up to the subdivide, turn up the depth to maybe about five or so, and this is going to give us a lot of detail along here. And what we can do now, is just simply a poly reduce, and we can export that out as a BGO file. And now at about 20%, we end up with about 200, 300,000 polygons or so, which is pretty good, I'd say, for VFX, film, or what have you. Obviously for video games, you might want to bake this down into a normal map, and then get more aggressive on this percentage to decrease. However, this works pretty darn well for all the detail that we're getting. As a bonus, we could add a little bit of extra detail by going down here to the bottom and saying to use displacement scale attributes. Uh, so basically, that will control how much this displaces out. If, let's say, we have an attribute noise floats, we can call this 
displace underscore scale. And if we feed that in before this triplanar projection, we could see that that will smooth off areas along the tower right here. So this might be a nice way of just adding a bit more variety to the silhouette, to the shape. And you can adjust this to your heart's content, but this will add a lot of additional detail. Okay, so we have that. We basically cash this out. And any kind of polygons that you want to have brick, you just apply this method and it works pretty darn well for the most part. If you're interested in watching the full course, then check out cgforge.com. Thanks for watching.